Welcome to my message today on the anxious generation. Uh, my name is Steve Reynolds. I'm the lead pastor here at Capital Baptist Church in Annandale, Virginia. And I am excited today as we kick off a brand new teaching series called Anxious for Nothing. Anxious for Nothing. And so I welcome you uh, here today as we kick off this uh, series. And, and really this one, we actually call it a spiritual growth campaign. Uh, because as you're going to learn, uh, we add what I call some bells and whistles to this teaching series uh, for the maximum impact. And uh, so this fall, uh, we're going to be looking at an important topic of anxiety. And, and the title of the sermon today, The Anxious Generation, is actually a title uh, that has been given to describe our current uh, generation. And so let me just ask you a question today. Uh, are you nervous? Are, are you tense? Hey, listen, has, are you paralyzed uh, by worry? I mean, does this describe you? Well, listen, it describes me to some extent. And honestly, I think at this time, it probably describes uh, pretty much all of us. Uh, because the reality is anxiety disorders are at an all-time high, okay? Uh, at least in my lifetime, okay? And, uh, and, and basically, they're, they're at epidemic proportions. And the bottom line is, you know, you weren't created to live overwhelmed by anxiety. Let me just say that again. You were not created to live overwhelmed by anxiety. Uh, what does it do? It drains your joy. It leaves you stress. It burns you out. And listen, you're just exhausted. It, it exhausts you. It, it, it takes the life out of uh, your life. Uh, your purpose in life, listen, it's not to live in fear. And here's the deal. It's time to fight back and live free. It's time to fight back and live free. And with that in mind today, I have an announcement to share with you. And that is Pastor Steve Reynolds is announcing war on anxiety. You see, the truth is anxiety is attacking us. Anxiety, listen, is coming to us. We're at war uh, with anxiety. And, and we can just take it or, or, or better yet, we can use God's word uh, to live free uh, for when it comes to anxiety. And, and so I am so excited about sharing this message uh, with you uh, today. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a deep dive uh, into Philippians 4, 4 through 9. And I'm going to read that passage to you uh, in just a little bit here, okay? Uh, but I just want to talk about that this passage reveals a battle plan for uh, dealing with anxiety. It reveals a battle plan for how you can, listen, win over worry and experience peace. How can we win over worry and experience peace? And this Bible passage was written by the Apostle Paul, and he literally wrote this in prison, okay? Uh, he literally wrote this in prison. He, he literally wrote these words um, maybe hours, uh, certainly no more than days before he literally was going to get his head chopped off, okay? Just, just imagine that, okay? He is about to be martyred for Jesus, all right? And he knows it, okay? He knows that Emperor Nero is, is going to chop off his head. And, and yet here he is in this dungy, dark, uh, cold uh, place, this prison cell, if you will, and he pens these words under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And basically, there are six verses here, and I call them six calming steps that lead to one wonderful promise. Here are six verses, Philippians 4, 4 through 9, with six calming steps that lead to one wonderful promise. And here's the promise. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That is the hope. That is the promise. That is the key verse uh, for this uh, Anxious for Nothing uh, series, okay? So welcome 
Thank you for being here. I want to encourage you to be here as often as you can and to fully participate in Anxious for Nothing, okay? So welcome. Thank you for joining with us today as we talk about uh, the anxious generation. And so what I want to do right now, which I'll do each week, is I'm going to read Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Philippians 4, 4 through 9. And here the Word of God says, and again, just try to get it in your mind, the person writing this is in prison about to be beheaded. All right? I, just, I just want you to understand, okay? He's not in some comfortable, uh, safe place. He's in an uncomfortable, unsafe place. And he writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Wow, I love this. In fact, Philippians is actually my favorite book of the Bible. And so there's six calming steps we're going to learn from these verses, okay? And, uh, and I said I'm going to read this every week, but I want to go beyond that. Part of our spiritual growth campaign is going to be the challenge to actually memorize, okay, word for word, uh, this Bible passage of Philippians 4, 4 through 9. That's right. I want to challenge you to actually memorize uh, this incredible uh, passage uh, from uh, the Word of God. And and to help you do that, I've put this passage uh, onto a card. Okay, Here's the front of the card, but on the back of the card is this passage. And so, listen, If you don't have one of these, I'd like to get you one of these, okay? And you can email me at wecare at capitalbaptist.org. Wecare at capitalbaptist.org, and uh, and I can get that uh, to you, okay? Well, with that in mind, let's recognize the fact that, like I said earlier, the title for this series comes from this passage, Philippians 4, 6a where it says, be anxious for nothing, all right? So the title of the series is based on that uh, Bible passage. And, and the word here for anxious, the Greek word uh, for anxious, means to be pulled in different directions. The Greek word anxious here means to be pulled in different directions. Basically, when you're anxious, I mean, you got, you got like a tug of war going on in your life, right? Right? as a Christian in particular, okay? Because as a Christian, you, you have some hope, right? I mean, I mean, you know, God's Spirit lives in you and, 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 you, and you have some hope, but at the same time, you have some fear, right? You have some fear. And there's this like tug of war going on uh, in your life, okay? That's anxiety, okay? That's anxiety according to uh, the Word uh, of Almighty God. And, and again, we're the anxious generation. I mean, uh, epidemic proportions right now of anxiety uh, disorders. So today, let's talk about the anxious generation. And what I want to do is I want to help you understand it, okay? And I want to give you uh, what we're going to do to, to help us uh, live free, okay? So today is kind of an introduction, if you will, an orientation uh, to this spiritual growth uh, campaign. And so again, I want to remind you of our key verse for today, which is also the key verse for the series, is Philippians 4, 7, because this is what we want to see happen in our lives. And the peace of God, that's what we want. We want God's peace. And, and listen, it's not a natural peace. It's a supernatural peace because it's described this way. 
which surpasses all understanding. Uh, this peace that, that we can have. I mean, how could this man, Paul, in a, in a dungy prison cell, getting ready to be beheaded, okay, how can he be at peace? It, listen, it's spiritual, okay? It's supernatural. It, it's God. It surpasses all understanding. And listen, the Bible says here, we'll guard, we'll guard, guard your heart, guard your mind. How? Through Christ Jesus, okay? As we learn to apply this passage to our life, it's, it's like a guard, standing guard against the attack upon us of anxiety. It will guard our hearts. It will guard our minds. And it all happens through the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, what a wonderful, wonderful promise. So first of all, let's talk about the attack on the anxious generation. Okay, why? Again, I, just to be clear, I mean, every human being and, uh, that's ever lived and will live will deal with anxiety. Okay, it's not, it's not like something new or whatever. But, but the level today is just, it's just incredible. Okay, it, it really is incredible. So what is it about the time we're living in? Number one, the first attack is unbelief. Unbelief. The, the enemy has worked in our culture to lead people away from God and believing God and believing the word of God. And Jesus described it this way in Matthew 9, 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Wow. Jesus looked out, you know, at the world at that time and, 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 he, and, he, and he saw them, uh, they were weary, they were scattered. And here's the picture, they, they were sheep without a shepherd. They were sheep without a shepherd. And I'm telling you today, uh, there's more and more people who are living life with no shepherd, okay? without, without the Lord being in their lives. They do not believe, okay? They, 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 they do not believe. And, and Jesus talks about in Matthew 6, this is a sermon on the mount, the most famous sermon ever preached, he talks about you know, anxiety and, and worry, and, and he talks about the importance of faith and trust in dealing with it. Listen to what Jesus says, Therefore do not worry. Therefore do not worry. Same thing as you know, be anxious for nothing. Jesus said, Therefore do not worry, saying, What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things, okay? So the idea is you have a, 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 a shepherd, that your heavenly father, he, he knows uh, about our needs. And here's what we need to do. We need to put, seek him first. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, these things that we are anxious about, shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things, Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And there's obviously a whole sermon in this passage, okay, which we don't get to preach today. But the thing I, I want to say about that, the reason I, I shared it with you, is it's talking about faith is necessary. You have to trust God in your life. And one reason there's so many people that are anxious is unbelief. They, they don't know God. They don't live for God. They don't, they, they don't know the Lord. They're not saved, okay? They're not born again. Uh, and, and, and they're living life on their own. And unfortunately, there's so many weak Christians. There are so many people out here that, 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 that if you ask them, are they saved? And, I, and I do, I'm not saying they're not saved. They, they probably are saved, but, but they're not growing. They're not maturing. They're, they're not being everything they can be for God. Their faith, listen, is not strong. That's attack number one. Attack number two is just pure evil. Just pure. The, these days are just, the culture is full of evil. And I believe, as many believe, that these could be what the Bible calls the last days. This could be the time right before the rapture. This could be the time right before uh, things as we know it uh, are changed, okay? And here's what the Bible describes as the last days. Okay, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But this, but know this, that in the last days, okay, in the last days it's going to be perilous times. Perilous times are going to come. Great peril is going to be in the culture. 
For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, and having a form of godliness that would be like just religion, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Again, a whole sermon, or even a series, okay? Uh, this one is much more than a, than a sermon, okay? I'm just pointing out to you the evil in this world. I mean, I mean, I mean it's mind-blowing, okay? The things that people are getting into and, 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 and believing are unbelievable, okay? I mean, I think the truth is, you know, we're almost becoming like shock-proof. I mean, you know, who knows what people are going to be doing uh, next? But you know what it does? It, it creates anxiety. It, I mean, to live in such an evil culture creates anxiety, okay? Number three is just plain old trouble. Just plain old trouble. Uh, Job 14, 1 says, Man who is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Hey, life is hard, okay? This is nothing new, okay? This one, number three, has definitely been part of every human experience, okay? Just plain old trouble, okay? Uh, we, we live in a, a broken world. We live in a depraved world. Uh, the curse of sin uh, is uh, on us and, and even in us, okay? And, and, and it leads to trouble, okay? We, we, we have all kinds of issues with health and, and relationships, and, and, you know, relationships are so messy, and one of the reasons they're so messy is because we, we all have that fallen uh, nature uh, in us. I mean, I mean, just plain old human suffering, okay? Just dealing with, the, you know, uh, hurricanes and and earthquakes and, and all kinds of things going on, uh, you know, in, in, the, in, in, the, in the world around us. And, and it causes, what? Anxiety, right? Anxiety when we're going through uh, such pain and such uh, difficulty. But then number four, which is definitely unique to us, is just technology. Technology. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, we, we, we live in such a technical world. And, and I believe this was prophesied in Daniel 12, verse 4. Daniel 12, verse 4 says, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. And here's what it says about the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. We could say so much about this, okay? But just let me make a few important comments, okay? Technology, that, that's a big word that covers a lot of different things, okay? I mean, you could probably put a, a dozen things under the title technology, okay? But let me just kind of point out a few, okay? It's talking about how that because of the knowledge of speed increasing, we're going to be running to and fro. In other words, these so-called time-saving devices aren't, aren't saving as much time, right? Okay? And... Um, and so the speed of the culture has gotten faster and faster and faster and faster because of the exchange of information. I information can, can move so quickly uh, during this time because of technology. And, and one good example of that is simply the, the, the phone we, we have. The, you know, I, I'll say iPhone because that's what I use. I use an iPhone, okay? Or I use Android, whatever you use, okay? But the smartphone, that's probably the word I was looking for, smartphone. You know, uh, it, it's, it's smart, okay? In fact, by the way, it's powerful. Uh, you know, one statistic that I heard a while back that I, I came to my mind in preparing this was the, the phone I use, the iPhone I use, okay, has more power and memory than the Apollo 11 computer, okay? The Apollo 11 when they landed on the moon, okay? The computer they had in their uh, uh, craft, their, the, the Apollo 11, okay, uh, I got more power, okay, in my hands with my, with my iPhone, okay? In fact, I read one statistic, I don't know if this is true or not, okay? 
but I'll just throw it out there, okay? Uh, someone said that it's 100,000 times as much processing power. Okay, my iPhone has 100,000 times as much processing power as the Apollo 11. So here they were, they, they left the earth and went up all the way to the moon, landed on the moon, and, and, and that's, that's what they had, okay? And now I get to hold in my hand something that's much more powerful. That's incredible, right? But you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful, but it creates a lot of stress, right? A lot of anxiety. I mean, one thing is availability. I mean, we're pretty much always on, okay, unless you turn off your phone, right, okay? I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm working in some form or fashion from early in the morning to late at night, okay? And part of my work is I have a, a phone, okay, and I have texting, and I have email, and I have social media, and I have, have all these different things. And man, oh man, I can, I can in a day's time, I'm, one day I ought to just calculate it, okay? I mean, I can communicate with people, you know, next door that way. I communicate with people literally all over the world, okay, uh, because of that. And, and it is a gift in a lot of ways, but it's also not such a gift, okay, uh, because it's created a lot of anxiety uh, for us. And one area where it's created anxiety is with our young people, okay, in preparation for this, I've been reading a book called The Anxious Generation. That's actually where I got the title of the uh, sermon from, okay? And uh, this is, this is it's about 400 pages, so, so I'm not necessarily saying you can find summaries of it and shorter uh, YouTube presentations about it if you want to, okay? But honestly, any educator, any parent, uh, pastors, I mean, it's good to, to read this book here, okay? I, I, you know, I, I'm not finished with it, but I, I'm going to get finished with it, okay? And basically, he talks about uh, Gen X in particular, but just young people, young adults, and the anxiety they are dealing with today. I mean, it is incredible, okay? And, uh, and basically, what he talks about, and this author, I, I want to be clear, this is not a Christian book. Let me say it again. Not a, in fact, you know what? This, the author is actually an atheist. And he uses terms, you know, that I, that I don't like, okay? They're not biblical worldview terminology, okay? But he has done amazing. He's a sociologist. His, his research is solid, okay? And basically what he argues for is that in, it started in 2010 when we got away from the flip phone to, to, the, to a forward-facing phone, okay? And, and statistically... It's unbelievable the rate of increase of anxiety, the depression, the taking of uh, suicide rate, uh, all these different mental illness or whatever, particularly of young people, okay? And basically what he argues about, argues for, is there's less child play, okay? Which, you know, I, I would, I mean, I, I would literally go outside in, in, in the morning and sometimes wouldn't be seen till dark, okay, at home or whatever. Um, and, 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 of course, now parents are afraid for, for good reason, okay? Um, and so basically kids aren't experiencing childhood play, but their virtual world has been opened up, okay? And a lot of parents aren't monitoring that, okay? And, you know, it produces bullying, it produces comparison. We all struggle with that, right? Comparison. We, we look at social media and stuff and say, wow, you know, they're... They, they're doing better than me or whatever, you know, and, and they look better than me and they're, 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 they're happier than me and, and all that stuff. What I'm getting at is technology is huge, okay? We're under attack. Number two, the harm to the anxious generation. The harm, it's harmful. Psalm 37, 8b says, do not fret, it only causes harm. Do not fret. And the word fret there is don't, don't be anxious. Why? Because it only causes harm. What kind of harm? It harms you spiritually because the Bible says, Jesus said, that anxiety chokes out spiritual maturity. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke 8, 14. Okay, this is the parable of the sowing of the seed. Okay, maybe you're familiar with it. He talks about different human hearts and how the seed of the Word of God is sown. And here he says, Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, they go out, but here's the problem, they're choked with the cares, the riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. Okay, they don't produce 
full maturity. They don't, they, don't, they don't bring fruit of maturity. And part of that is because they're choked out by the cares. And that word cares means anxieties of this world. I mean, you can't become a mature Christian and be totally overridden with anxiety, okay? Because it's not going to work, all right? Number two, obviously it harms you physically, right? I mean, a lot of damage is done uh, to the human body. You know, I mean, I, 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 you know, I don't have time to even list all of that, okay? But, but you know, headaches and, and heartburn and ulcers and, and uh, you know, high blood pressure, and, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Number three, it harms you mentally, mentally. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And we're double-minded, and that brings us back to our definition of anxiety, okay? And that is being pulled, pulled apart in different directions, okay? We, we, you know, as a Christian, we have some hope in us, but yet we get overridden with, with fear, and, and there's turmoil inside of us, and we're, we're like double-minded, and it impacts our mental health. And then it harms you emotionally. The Bible is very clear. It says anxiety in the heart of man causes what? Depression. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. But good, a good word makes it glad. I mean, bottom line, worry steals your joy, right? It, it steals your joy. It, it, it causes you to be anxious, all right? Listen, the enemy is attacking us, all right? And, and, and guess what? The, the consequences are severe. It's impacting us spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. But today, I want to share with you the hope. The hope for the anxious generation. You know what the hope is? The hope is God, right? The hope is God. God is our hope. We, we, we need a shepherd, okay? We need a heavenly father uh, to take care of us. We need a savior, Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit to abide uh, in us, okay? Uh, we need the word of God. We, we, need, we need the Bible. We, we, the Bible says you know the truth. The truth will set you free, okay? We need to know God's word. But in particular, specifically, in relationship to what we're doing right now is, listen, our hope is Philippians 4, 4 through 9. And, and I'm not going to read it again to you, okay, um, because it was our opening passage today. But listen, uh, it's our hope. This passage, again, 6, 6, calming, okay, things that God gives us in that passage to help us with anxiety. And, and, and listen, the Bible says, you know, hide God's word in your heart and you won't sin against God. And I, and I cannot emphasize to you enough, all right? It's not going to be easy to memorize this passage. I can tell you that much, okay? But will you, will you take the challenge to memorize it or, or even do your best to memorize it? On top of this card... Uh, we are going to give you these verses on little cards, okay? Little cards, just like this, okay? And, uh, and if you're part of our weekly mailing, you'll get this in the mail, all right? This, this little card each week, okay? If you're not, I'll tell you more about that uh, at the end of the, of the service today, okay? But we have these little cards, and we're putting all these cards, and what I want you to do, I want you to keep it close to you. Like, I, I'm literally, I'm not, I didn't have it in my pocket to impress you, okay? <laughs> I'm keeping it in my pocket, all right? I'm keep, keeping these verses close to me, okay? And I'm trying to review them uh, as often as I po possibly can throughout the day, okay? And hopefully by the end of the week, if I keep doing that, I'm going to have Philippians 4, 7 totally memorized, okay? Why? It's our hope. This is our hope. And then lastly, the battle plan for the anxious generation. So like I said at the beginning, Pastor Steve Reynolds is declaring war on anxiety. All right, we, we can just take it, okay, because anxiety is obviously um, at war with us, all right? And we can just let it run right over top of us and, and literally steal our very life, okay? A life filled with anxiety is not a life, that's for sure, okay? Or we can fight back. And we're going to fight back, all right? And so as we close today, I just want to share with you what's ahead. 
So we're going to do this on what I call three different levels. And here's the deal. I want you to hear this. Whatever you put into this is what you're going to get out of it. All right? It's your choice. I promise you, okay, I will give this my all, okay? I promise you that. I promise you I will give you my very best during Anxious for Nothing. Okay, will you do the same? So there's three different levels in, in this battle plan to win victory over worry and experience peace. Number one, what I call the individual level. This is two things. There's two things only you can do. Okay, because you do them by yourself. Okay, I can't do them for you, all right? And the first one is uh, to do what we call the growth guides. So we will prepare uh, for you uh, a daily Bible reading plan with some uh, questions to ponder, okay, to meditate on. And, uh, and, 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 and we're going to provide these for you. We're going to, again, if you're on our weekly mailing list, we're going to mail them to you, okay? Uh, and, and, but I can't do it for you, okay? You, you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to carve out 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes each day. I mean, it's written, it's written for people that are busy. You know, it's not a lot, okay? It's not a heavy assignment, okay? It's a few Bible passages. It's two or three questions each day. You can do this if you want to, okay? And then the key verse cards, Okay? Only you can keep this card close to you. I can't do that for you. you got to do it yourself, all right? And only you can take it and look at it and go over it, over and over it, all right? So that's what we call the individual level. You do your growth guides, do your key verse cards. Number two, group level. Would you like to be part of a group? Let me know, okay? And we will make this available to you online, okay? you got to let me know. E email wecare at capitalbaptist.org. Say, I want to be in a, a group and talk about this anxiety stuff. And then the last one is what I call the congregational level, okay? And, uh, and what that is, it's eight sermons. So today you've heard sermon number one. Good job, okay? But guess what? There's seven more to go, okay? Seven more to go. And I, and I want you to make a commitment that you're going to hear every one of these sermons. And, and, and you can watch it on the online service, like now, uh, it's on our YouTube channel, it's on our Facebook, it's in our church app. I mean, you can find it, okay? Just look, look good, okay? You don't even have to look hard, okay? It's available to you. And I want to challenge you to hear all eight of these sermons. Well, here we go. I'm declaring war, okay? I'm going to fight back. And I'm willing to be the point person to help us all, okay? And I'm going to stand in the gap. <laughs> I'm going to do everything I can to help all of us to be anxious for nothing. And so today we're going to close with this. Participate in anxious for nothing. Just make a decision you're going to do that. And today as I close, each week I'm going to pray a biblical prayer over us. And that prayer is Romans 15, 13. Romans 15, 13. And Paul wrote this to the church at Rome. And here's what he said, and this is a prayer. Now may God, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may, be, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again as a prayer. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hey, listen, let's participate in Anxious for Nothing and find that hope.